RTE Soccer Women's World Cup podcast, sponsored by Cadbury. For grassroots to national level, a supporter and a half of women's football in Ireland. Turn the world round, shut the show down. All right, welcome along to the RT Soccer Women's World Cup podcast. Raf Giallo here, and every match of the tournament is live on RT Television and the RT Player. As we're recording, England are currently in action against Haiti and leading 1 0 thanks to Stanway's retaken penalty. And while that's going on in the background, I'm joined by RT Sport Online's Anthony Pine, who's in Brisbane, where the Ireland team are based, and also Rebecca Cray, player liaison with Shelburne. And also a former player for Shells and Rohini United, who she captained to FAI Cup Glory in 2013. And, you know, looking back at the lineups from that game, Rebecca, um, you know, 10 years on, seeing Katie McCabe and also Kira Grant uh, in the Ireland squad and playing in a World Cup, you must be thrilled with what they've been able to achieve. Yeah, most definitely. Look, it's great memories we've had, you know, through the court, throughout the course of domestic football here and just to see the the kind of heights they reach now, you know, obviously Katie in, in obviously club football over in over in Arsenal, but Kira as well, you know, in the last year has gone across the hearts and has really excelled. Um, but obviously to see them on the biggest stage in, in you know, world football is is amazing and look, they deserve everything they've got. Yeah, and Anthony, um obviously you were perusing the papers uh, during the week. Um James Richardson style, obviously, as you said, without the uh, without the coffees or the glamour. But um, Katie McCabe has made an impression on the headlines uh, from the Australian point of view from that first game with a running battle with Hayley Rasso. And um, there's a quote in uh, news.com.au where they said she had become Australia public enemy number one after clattering in it into a number of Matilda's players. So uh, on one side, I mean, they're getting to see her quality as well, but um, it's not necessarily to every um, Australian media person's liking. Yeah, I, I mean, you kind of have to put it into the context of what happened last Friday in the Columbia match. You know, uh, people, I mean, unfairly, I think, sort of framed it as like how bad were Colombia uh, if if they made this Ireland team walk off the pitch. Um, but I don't think, I, I really don't think Ireland were over the line or crossing lines, uh, including Katie McCabe. She is aggressive. That's her game. That's a big part of her game. Um Actually, if you look at the stats, the FIFA stats afterwards, Australia committed more fouls than Ireland, 12 to 9. Um, but, you know, you've got the home crowd there. A lot of it was brilliant Irish support in the stadium. There was still, you know, the, the home fans outnumbered the Irish support. So anytime there's a foul or a, a robust tackle, a big sort of reaction goes up in the crowd. That, that can affect your judgment on these things as well. But um, look, there was... I, I, I could be wrong on this. I, I think there was only one player booked. I think it was just Denise O'Sullivan. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. If I, I, yeah. I stand correctly, if I am. But, but, and, and that was for dissent. Uh, we were actually speaking to Denise this morning here in Brisbane. Um, and the, the yellow seems harsh. I mean, it did seem a little confusing at the time of what exactly she got it for. It wasn't a foul. She, I think it was Sinead Faraday was um, penalised for a foul. And, and Denise didn't even say anything. She just threw her hands up in the air in frustration. Uh, and she got booked. Uh, which kind of leaves her in a bit of a tight walk. I, I think if she gets another yellow, she could miss the third game. Um, so that was a bit. That's a bit frustrating. But yeah, I mean, there, there was a bit of reaction, Kate, because she certainly doesn't hold back. But um, I don't think she crossed the line at any point. You know, I think it's sort of play around ball type of tackles and. Sure, what's wrong with that? <laughs> uh, Rebecca, <laughs> yeah, Re- Re- Rebecca, what's uh, your thoughts on it actually? Because again, it's Katie's style of play. We see it with Arsenal week in, week out. There's a there's a tenacity along with the quality. And to be honest, you know, most teams tend to have a player like that who kind of sets the tone. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I think you need that on the park. You know, I've I've you know I know throughout my playing career, I might have had a bit of back chat you know and there's numerous players that I've played with that that are that kind of player and and Katie has come from that you know and and I think there's times in games when Katie drags it along because she has that energy she brings that kind of you know ferocity feistiness a little bit of edge to the game you know obviously she's a quality quality player you know but you do need that little bit of bite and you know I know there was a few kind of you know arms thrown up from from the likes of Hayley Rasso throughout the game you know they had a little bit of a back and forth but that's what you want. And and look, the adrenaline was pumping through the whole Irish team. You could see that from the get-go and, and Katie, you know, emulated that. Um, I love that she's that kind of player. She's not lost her since she's been younger, or since she was younger, I should say. Um, you know, and it's just, 
I know even the crowd watching the game the other day, everyone was getting behind it, you know, and it's just that Irish kind of, you know, feistiness we, we all have, I think. And uh, yeah, look, I hope she, hope she never loses it. There was a one or one or two tackles I seen now. I was kind of like, you know, will the referee pull a card out? But luckily enough, she, she got away with it this time. So. Yeah. But you know that the thing is though as well, Rebecca, she's streetwise. She Craig Kay Cave is a streetwise footballer. Like, she pushes like she, the boundaries. Exactly. She pushes you know? the boundaries. Yeah. But rarely, very rarely does she actually like when was the last time she got straight red? I, I, certainly with thing. Ireland. Yeah. People rare rave about, you know, Katie getting yellow cards and yellow cards and yellow cards, whatever. Yeah, she might have a suspension from the amount of yellow cards, but there's never been a time I can remember in recent years that she's got, you know, a straight red for a reckless tackle. Um, so yeah, look, it's it's what you need, I think, in, in any team. Yeah, and one of the big questions, of course, is how to get her further forward, obviously, in this uh, left wing back berth. And something Denise O'Sullivan was talking about, she was talking to Tony O'Donoghue um, earlier today, and the full interview you can find on YouTube and RT.ie. But let's just listen to what Denise had to say about Katie. And can we get Katie further forward as well? I know her role is very specific, uh, you know, as the, as the wing back, but her corners, uh, you know, the, the way she got herself forward late in that second half as well. She's remarkable. Yeah, she is. She's absolutely fantastic. And Katie can play anywhere on the pitch. So, um, yeah, she's she's remarkable. And it would be good to get her for, forward. But um, I think also in the left-back position, uh, she she thrives back there. And, and I think we having her back there is is huge for us. But also, if she's up forward, she can score a goal. So it's, it's a tough one. And that's Vera's decision at the end of the day. And are we flexible enough tactically that we can change in game more to the point we will veer a change in game do you think yeah I think we have a lot of players that can go into a lot of positions I think the the squad is very deep in that sense but um as I said I I don't really know and I think that's that's for Vera to to make a decision on all right so that's Denise O'Sullivan there we have another clip we're going to play later on where she discusses her own um role in terms of getting us forward herself because again between the two of them Katie got seven goals in qualifying Denise got six so we know the quality they have in that final third of the pitch when they got the, when they get the opportunity now the only problem is the quality of teams Rebecca that they're facing at the moment and especially with Katie playing left wing back it's going to be hard for her to get forward with any regularity and um would you like to see her moved into midfield and maybe someone like Chloe must Saki brought in a left uh, wing back or do you expect the same template? Yeah, look, it's it's somewhat a group of death if you, if you want, you know, people were throwing that around um, you know, with the, the Olympic champions in there, obviously Australia host nations and obviously Nigeria, a really, really strong African nation as well. So, like, personally, I'd love to see Katie higher up the park. You know, that's the only kind of way I ever played football with Katie was she was playing left wing, you know, she was just taking on defences, you know, scoring goals, getting crosses in and, um, but like I think in that position that she's in now, you know, she's a job to do. And, and you know, Vera has set up in that way that, look, she's as important as anything, as any goal. You know, she she gets us forward. She, you know, defends really well. So, like, I, th- I think it's a case that, look, she will probably stick there. I think she'll, she'll keep her there, um, especially for the Canada game. See how that goes. Um, again, you know, we might see something different in, in the Nigeria game, depending on the results of Canada. But, um, you know, she seems to, to fancy Izzy Atkinson as well coming off the bench. Um, obviously, Chloe Mustaki is there and I, I love Chloe. I'd love to actually see her get some time in that, that left wing back position because she can play there. She's played, you know, in that position. I know throughout underage teams, she obviously holds uh, plays as a holding midfielder as well. But it would push the likes of Katie up higher, you know, if we are needing that goal. And, you know, I know you mentioned Denise as well. She's kind of playing in that box midfield, you know, the low block has that more of a defensive position, I think, in, in games we've seen in, in recent uh, recent times. Again, you'd love to see her freed up in that just number 10 role, just floating between the lines, you know, being that playmaker that she's been for, for a long time. So, look, again, as the girls say, it's, it is Vera's decision. It just depends on who they come up against and, and how the game is going, I think, to, to see if we can we can free them up. Yeah, and as I said, Denise talked about her own potential to move forward as well. So let's just listen to what she had to say about that. What can we do to take more control of the game earlier in the game rather than in the last 10, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, I think obviously in an opening game of your first major tournament, there's going to be some nerves. So I think the first 10 minutes that really showed that there was nerves in the team. And after that, um, we were absolutely fine. But um, I think just going forward, I think as a whole unit, I think we can just clean up that a bit and... Um, create more uh, opportunities going forward, you know. Um, so in the attacking third, just hold up the ball better. Um, 
myself giving better passes in and, and stuff like that. It's just little things, uh, fine margins that we need to clean up on. So, How do you get yourself maybe that further 10, 15 metres forward though? Yeah, I, I really want to, but um, I'm obviously concerned against these big teams that on the transition, they're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So um, in the back of my mind, I want to be there to be able to protect that back line and um, hopefully going forward in the next game, I can, I can get that bit of an edge and, and get forward more. But my first thought is defensively, I need to, I need to be aware of her and um, they had a very um, fast attacking line. So that's where, that's where I need to be in that game. Yeah, and that's Denise Sullivan again there. And Anthony, just on her own potential to move further up the field. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, coming up against uh, Canada and the strength of their midfield. You know, he, obviously, Rusha Littlejohn has been playing sort of the deepest role um, alongside Denise. And I guess there's that thing of not letting her get isolated. And also just how how deep the Irish back three plays also plays a role in uh, Denise's positioning as well. Yeah, well, we we've asked we've asked Fair Pell about this a couple of times, and basically, it's it's her concern is the lack of pace that we have in defence. We've got really good defenders, Nifa, uh, Louise Quinn, um, but they were brilliant on Thursday night. The two of them, um, Megan Connolly, obviously beside them at the minute, but you know Diane Caldwell, another excellent defender, all really good at reading the play, strong in the air, aggressive. Uh, positionally brilliant but you know there is a lack of raw pace there and it's I think that's her concern that's why she's persistent with this five at the back and like it's it's a difficult thing to strike the, the correct balance because you know the margins here are very fine Ireland were very close to getting what would have been an incredible draw uh, on Thursday night um, but it's that high wire act that if they concede the first goal you know if it's it's difficult to see where it's coming from when you're playing in the way that they are. So, um, I mean, we, we, Vera Pell has, has said that she wants to go and beat uh, Canada on Wednesday. That's that's the aim. There is a scenario here, though, that two points could get you out of the group. You know, if, if Ireland draw against Canada and draw against Nigeria, if Australia were to beat Canada by two goals and to beat Nigeria by two goals, we would go through with two points because it's goal difference. And, and you know, that has to be on our mind. Like I, as I agree with Rebecca, like there's not going to be a big change here for the Canada game. I think it will be as you were, same approach, um, with the emphasis on no city mistakes. You know, no city mistakes. Let's not give them a goal, make them work for it. Canada, excellent at the back, really well organized. But you could see without Jesse Fleming in the middle of the park for them against Nigeria, there, there is a lack of creativity. They really missed her ability. To, to punch holes and, and, and move Nigeria around uh, where passing from the middle of the park. Just, just double checking the stats here. They had over 450 passes against Nigeria, but they never really moved them around. They never got behind them or stretched them. Um, and, you know, you'd hope that Ireland will be able to deal. If it's a similar scenario on Wednesday, uh, in Perth on Wednesday, then you think Ireland will be okay with that. They're comfortable without the ball because they're, they're, they are so rigid and, and well drilled. And of course, they want to win, but a draw means it goes to the last game. It goes to that last game against Nigeria. And I think we'd all have taken that, you know, coming into this World Cup, that that, that last game isn't, you know, an, a dead rubber, but that we're still in it. Um, so I don't think there'll be any drastic change. Or maybe Abby Larkin, actually, uh, I, I think Abby Larkin's going to come into that team. Um, but Barrett, the, the approach, I think, is going to be pretty much the same as, as it was against Australia. Yeah, and uh, as uh, as Anthony said there, Lucy Quinn and uh, Abby Larkin were the the two that made a real impact in the in the closing stages. Rebecca, and do you do you also expect um, Abby to come into the starting eleven, or do you think her best role, especially as a young player, is making that impact later on in the game? Yeah, well, personally, I'd love to see her come in. Um, you know, I thought it was. It wasn't a game really for Sinead Farrelly. I didn't really see much of her. Um, you know, it, it just wasn't kind of ticking for her. And I think when when Abby came in and, and Lucy, it was just a breath of fresh air. You know, they elevated us that, that step higher. You know, the last 30, 25 minutes of that game, I honestly thought we were going to get something from it. You know, especially the last 10, 15, Australians had their backs against the wall. You know, and a lot of the time it was, it was Abby Larkin that was, you know, starting that attack and, and, and going down the wings and trying to get crosses in and, you know, the amount of corners we got in that those last few minutes. So, um, being you know, or, or seeing Vera over the last little while, she may not change. You know, she may stick with what she she start, started with the last game. 
Um, but I would love to see Abby come in um, for Sinead or Sinead Farley there, please. Yeah, and how sim- uh, how important is she symbolically as well, Rebecca, in terms of being one of the domestic-based players, obviously moved to Shamrock Rovers uh, at the start of the season. And I remember talking to the P-Mount manager, James O'Callaghan, uh, at the, the League of Ireland launch at the start of the campaign. And he for him, he felt the legacy he would love to see is more players from the League of Ireland being in the squad. Obviously, there aren't too many in terms of the actual numbers that went into the 23, but Abby is one of them. And I imagine as somebody who's been you know involved in the league here as well that's a positive as well as the likes of Anya Gorman of course who's uh been a stalwart for such a long time who's in, also in that 23. Yeah completely like I know, I know Abby you know the last few years she played at Shells and you know she's just come on so much you know last year I think it was kind of a you know a, a kind of standout year for her you know she she done really well she was starting to, to get goals for, for Shells as well and obviously made that move then to, to Shamrock Rovers this year and it's fantastic to have the likes of herself and on, you know, representing the league. But we also have probably, what, 12 players who came from the league as well. You know, he's Denise from Cork City. Obviously, Katie was Rohini uh, predominantly, then was briefly Shells. You know, you have Jamie Finn in there, who was obviously unlucky not to make the official squad. Chloe Mustaki, Louise Quinn, you know, even Neil Fahey played for, for Galway United back in the, the old older leagues. You know, again, not, just, not showing ages, but... um. Yeah, look, it's it's fantastic. And I think we do need more of that. You know, we've got great talent in this league. You know, you only have to watch it week in, week out. You know, obviously, the likes of Jesse Stapleton, Alex Kavanagh at Shells, um, you know, really young, good young girls at Shells as well. Hannah Healy, Rebecca Devereaux. But throughout the whole league, you know, you have Jenna Slattery out in Galway, um, number of players throughout the, the league. And it would be great to see, you know, in, in coming squads, um, that, that youth coming through um, and, and obviously a lot more representation. But I think that will... Will come. I think we've we've come on so much in in the the League of Ireland, you know, um, women's Premier Division, and the, obviously previously was the Women's National League. In the last twelve, you know, twelve years is probably the time I remember, you know, coming into fruition. But in the last two years, it's just gone on and on and on. You know, the funding is hopefully going to keep coming. Um, you know, it's something that we do need. The talent is there. It's just about investing in the women's game now and these girls haven't made this World Cup, you know, last October. That that was kind of the turning point. I think people's heads started turning. You know, we've we've got female footballers in this country that can go and do things. Um, so hopefully now all eyes will stay on women's football in the country after after this tournament. Yeah, and um, you mentioned uh, the Canada Nigeria game, Anthony earlier. So I had a chance to watch it yesterday, yesterday evening, just to get a sense of how Canada approached it, and it was very eerily similar to the way sort of Ireland ended up playing against Australia. You know, a a low block blocking off the middle and um, unlike Australia being able to you know win get the penalty and ultimately convert it Canada missed theirs when they had the opportunity through one of the the great players um, Christine Sinclair but very eerily similar and there is a template that is there that Nigeria have set that Ireland can of course follow well look Canada are still a formidable team you know it's it's a major challenge here and, and we shouldn't lose sight of that this this is a team that the reigning olympic champions um christine sinclair is now 40 years of age but you know 190 international goals she has immense uh, brilliant player and of course a, a big threat um but you know if you look at how they won the olympics they in the knockout stages they drew nil nil against brazil in the quarterfinals and bet them on penalties um, they bet the USA 1-0 in the semis thanks to a, a penalty that Jesse Fleming scored. Um, they bet Sweden on penalties in the final after the game finished one all in normal time. Uh, and it was Jesse Fleming's penalty. The, the, the goal in normal time came from a penalty as well. So like this has been, and by the way, this current team is well, it's very similar to that Olympic. Uh, winning team so there hasn't been major changes or anything so like it's not a new thing with them that they can struggle a little bit creatively um, uh, although they are excellent at the back so you know you're thinking this has got nil-nil written all over it um, and as I said that would be okay for Ireland but at the same time like you know if, if Ireland could just find a way to threaten a little bit more like you know that, that last 20 minutes 15 minutes against uh, Australia and Sydney it showed you that we are capable of troubling these top teams if we if we just 
take the shackles off a little bit. And I, I just, I'd like to see Ireland get get themselves into a position where they're defending a lead. Like I, I fancy Ireland against any team, any team, if they're one nil up. Like if Ireland get their nose in front, I'm not, I'm talking about any team at this tournament. I think they would find it really, really difficult to break them down. But to do that, to get yourself into that position, you do have to just back yourself a little bit earlier in the match. And, and you know, the case in point was Sweden and Gothenburg where Katie McCabe got the goal. And, you know, there was an absolute onslaught for a long time in that match. And they did get an equaliser in the end. But, you know, they could, they, Arne got out of there with a draw. I, I just, I, I'd love to see us get into that situation because I'd be confident that Arne, they certainly wouldn't be best by Canada if they went 1-0 up, you know, yeah. and they'd have a great chance of beating them. And, and that's the balance. That's the balance. Like it's it's not, you know, I don't we're not saying like play three five two or something and, and or you know four three three and totally go for from the off, but just a little bit more um a little higher up the pitch earlier in the game. And and I, I do think Abby Larkin will start. I have to say I do think she'll start her just because of her pace and ability to be players, it gives us something a little bit different. Um and hopefully, you know, she can she can come up with a little bit of magic. Uh, to, to get us a goal and, and a chance of beating the Canadians which would be absolutely huge if we could pull that off yeah because Canada did struggle a little bit with Nigeria's pace especially down the flanks on the rare occasions Nigeria were able to get they're out not, they're yeah. not yeah they're not a young team they're, they're not yeah. a young team either you know so I, I and that's again why I think Vera Powell will fancy having the extra bit pace that Larkin can can bring to the team yeah, but of course, if Fleming were to come back in, she sat out the, the first game and didn't come off the bench, not fully fit, Rebecca. And uh, Fleming, obviously, hugely talented player, key uh, key player for both Chelsea and for uh, for Canada. If she were to come back in, just how much of a challenge would that be for Ireland, especially in the middle of the park? Yeah, it would be a huge challenge. You know, watching her over the course of the year with Chelsea, you know, she's that box-to-box midfielder. You know, she's quite tenacious in the way she plays the game. Um, and can make make team their t- her team tick, you know. So it will be a concern if she she does come back in. Um, I don't know how confident I am that she will. Um, it seems like she's she's a bit of a niggle there, you know. She she hasn't trained too much over the course of the last week or so. So look, fingers crossed she doesn't for her sake. Um, you know, and hopefully we capitalise on on the team that they they do play. Yeah, and before we go, um, there's obviously results happening elsewhere. Earlier, earlier today, uh, Japan uh, trashed Zambia 5-0 and the USA, of course, in the early hours and that kicked off 2 a.m. Irish time, beat Vietnam 3-0 and, um, you know, penalties have been a key part of this as well. And Anthony, just from the the, the game in Sydney, you know, like from the TV angle, obviously we're seeing the, uh, the referee comms in terms of explaining things after going to the VAR screen and then, you know, explaining it to the stadium, what the decision is going to be. Did you get a sense of uh, how good the communication was between say referee and like the entire stadium when the, uh, the, Mar- or the penalty Marissa Shiva um, conceded when that, when that happened? Um, yeah, it's like, like, like I can't say at the time I, I didn't, it didn't strike me at the time, Raph, but then to be honest, which I was, I was kind of buried in a, yeah, a match caught, report, caught it, up, probably, yeah. but I, it, it probably went over my head. I, I have noticed just watching on TV, the other games, like the, the big announcement, <laughs> um, it was a bit of a novelty of it, but yeah, look, I mean, any clarity helps in the game, any, any, to break down that barrier of, uh, like fans like to know the process and, and I think it eliminates any sort of suspicion or, um, debate around these decisions if, if they're explained. So I think everybody would embrace that and, you know, it's 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 good, I think, so. Yeah, because at um, the moment it's half-time between England and Haiti and England leading from a retaken penalty and again, there was a, an earlier penalty incident as well where the referee on both occasions had to explain the uh, the process and what the ultimate decision was right. and I guess it's good for uh, the communication side of things. But just on the USA, um, Vietnam, um, Rebecca, I mean, Four years ago, in their opening game, they trashed Thailand 13-0, and there was a lot of, you know, there was a bit of recrimination about, you know, the gap between the the very top and those kind of incoming teams. But this, um, I guess this performance just shows that the gap maybe, okay, it was very one-sided, but it was a respectable scoreline. And, you know, the gap is inching slowly closer between the, I suppose, the haves and the have-nots within the game. Yeah, I can't imagine Vietnam be too too upset with that scoreline you know I, I'm pretty sure they, they probably knew they weren't going to win the game you know I was expecting the 13-0 that that uh or in the round that anyway that that the USA um you know battered 
Thailand win their first uh, World Cup game, the last World Cup. Um, but like one of them, like it was Vietnam just came out of blocks, you know, they were there to just disrupt USA's game plan, you know, they they just went in, they were flying in on tackles, you know, there's some, if you were giving out about Casey McCabe in the last game, you'd be, you'd be <laughs> horrified at these tackles, you know, they were just kicking lumps, but, you know, the USA dominated possession, you know, there was, as I said, they just weathered the, the few rash challenges, Sophia Smith is, is you know, is a, a revelation for them, I think, in this tournament, she's probably going to be up there, maybe, you know, knocking on the, the top goal scorer um, door as well as the maybe the player of the tournament. You know, she's a really good player. I don't think the USA are the team of, of the past that they, you know, they would have had the Carly Lloyds, you know, in there. And, um, you know, the Dahl Camper, I know, played centre half. I know Julie Ertz is sitting back in there now. Um, she's obviously a, um, a player that they've had in, in previous years as well. But they don't look like the, the same USA that, that I would have followed throughout the, the course of time, you know, but I think, you know, when they come up against those tougher teams, you know, if we get to the later stages of the tournament, that's when the USA show up, you know, they, they love those kind of big games, but look, they, they got through last night and um, got, got their first win on the, the cards and, and look, I'd say there'll be, there'll be major things to come from them in, in coming weeks. Yeah, and uh, Zambia was uh, one team we talked about, uh, Anthony. Obviously, we saw them, or you saw them firsthand in Tala um, when they came here for the the penultimate friendly before Ireland flew out, and they didn't really get to show any of that today. Japan were very, very impressive, and again, I suppose it's two sides. Maybe again, look, you can you can read too much into warm up games, and Zambia did quite well in those, but also at the same time, Japan are one of the real dark horses. Yeah, I mean, I really liked Zambia. I thought they were great in Tala that night. They did lose Grace Chanda, who was fantastic for them against Ireland. She, she's uh, she's missed out with an illness. She uh, went to hospital, and uh, you know, that's a blow for them. But, you know, as you say, they are playing an excellent team in Japan. Uh, they're a team that can win. I think you said Sue Ronan uh, yes, did, yeah. back then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, a real baptism of fire for them. Um, but look, you know, it's it's you're at the, the sharp end of things here. You know, it's 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 a learning curve. Um, I still think that they'll, <laughs> I, I still think they have results in them. I just think there's so much talent going forward. Um, but you know, you know, I, I didn't to be honest, I didn't see the match in full, so I couldn't really analyze what happened. But maybe there was a bit of stage fright. They froze, they conceded a, a goal and panicked a little bit. You know, but that can happen as well. But you know, I wouldn't be. I'm not going to give up on Zambia yet. I think I think they could surprise us yet. There's still a couple of games to go. So Yeah, and uh, of course, Denmark-China, that's the one o'clock game, which is going to be RT2 and the RT player. And we've got the highlight show then at 7.20pm as well. And then tomorrow, Sunday, uh, it's again another busy day of action. Sweden against South Africa at six in the morning. That's in Group G. In Group B, there's Netherlands against Portugal at half eight in Dunedin. And then Group F, it's France against Jamaica at 11am. And France, a team that we played in our final warm-up before um, heading out to Australia. And, you know, Rebecca, looking at these, I suppose, finally you know Sweden Netherlands and France they're all they have the talent potentially to go all the way but I would feel there are question marks over all three of them yeah like they're, they're major European teams you know they've they've been there you know knocking on the door the last two decades I suppose you know um France watching them play in Tala like they at times they didn't even look like they got out of second gear you know I thought the first half that we played against them I thought we could have got something from the game you know we were that good like we were just Look like we were going for it, you know, fearless in, in our approach. Um, you know, second half then, those goals they got, you know, especially the second one, I think Les Amer got the play, you know, they just knew where each other were, you know, little around the corner passes, one touch, goal, you know, and it's that, that easy. That's the level you're coming up against in these tournaments. Again, with Netherlands and, and Sweden, obviously we, we met Sweden in qualification um, and, and obviously put it up to them as well, you know, but um, this is definitely a tournament where, you know, not that you get found out, but you'll definitely be put up to it, you know, and, and this is where, you know, you want to be, but it's definitely going to be a huge challenge. And look, I'm hopeful that, that Ireland will get out of their group, you know, I think that's all it can be. And I'm looking forward to it to next Wednesday. Yeah, so lots of exciting games uh, to look forward to over the next uh, few days. Uh, Rebecca, thanks a mil for taking the time. And Anthony Pine, it's getting late in Brisbane, so um, <laughs> I'd say it's good night or something close to it. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Not right. too late. What, what time is it? 20 to 9. So.
not too not too bad down to the pub so it's, we <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's winter here so it gets dark really early it's half five it's getting dark you know yeah so, uh, it, it's do you know what it's summer here and it's getting dark very early as well i must say <laughs> no, no. So, stretch is so it's gone, all the same yeah, yeah no the, the lot the yeah. stretch is stretch is long gone long gone so <laughs> there's not much to look forward to when you come back anyway best luck <laughs> thanks a million thanks, thanks a million for your time <laughs> A supporter and a half likes, shares, comments and tweets. Cadbury sponsors RTE Soccer Women's World Cup podcast.